check out Paddy Power's new and exclusive Cash Card Plus. Available to use online, at ATMs, or even down the local. Paddy Power, you beauty. Hello everyone and welcome to this racing postcast looking ahead to the world's greatest flat race. And we might well have the world's greatest postcast panel because joining me, myself, Lee Motter said, we have what might appear to be a Right Said Fred reunion, but is in fact a stellar lineup to look ahead to this fantastic derby. I'm joined by Stuart Riley of the Racing Post, James Byrne of the Racing Post, and Paul Binfield, not of the Racing Post, but of our wonderful sponsors, Paddy Power. And no better place to start than with the 4.30 at Epsom on Saturday afternoon, the Investec Derby. Paul, we'll start with you. Tell us who's going to be favourite and what the betting is as of now. Well, we can't separate Cliffs of Mohair at the moment, Lee, we, uh, and Cracksman. They're both four to one joint favourites at the present time. Um, we, we think probably Cliffs of Mohair will start favourite, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Eminent for Martin Mead at seven to one, 10 to one Capri and Permian, 12 Venice Beach, 14 Best Solution, and Dubai Fund, Funder, a bit of money for Dubai Funder this morning, 16 to one bar. OK, so Paddy Power think that Cliffs of Mo will go off favourite. That was right, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah. Yep. We, we've actually got a special market on that, Lee. We, we make Cliffs of Mo her six to four, six to four on to, to go off favourite because of the uh, Aidan O'Brien, Ryan Moore factor. 11 to eight, Cracksman. Um, 12 to one, Eminent. 33 to one, any other horse to go off favourite. Um, but probably Aidan's will go off favourite, we, we think. OK, so Aidan will win out over Frankie in the who will go off favourite betting. But more importantly, who will go off favourite is who will win the race. And if we start with Cliffs of Moa and the, the seven Ballydoyle uh, runners, how do we assess those two? Is Cliffs of Moa, first of all, is Ryan Moore on the right horse? Yeah, I think he definitely is, yeah. Um, if you speak to Dave Edwards of uh, Top Speed fame, he raves about this horse. He says recorded one of the highest top speed figures when it won its maiden uh, last year and he thinks it's a serious horse now if you're a serious horse and you're in this race you're probably going to win and I think Ryan's definitely on the right one of the Ballydoll lot and would you dismiss the other Ballydoll horses no I'd never dismiss them like, they're, they're perfectly capable of, of hitting the frame each of them but I think yeah it's uh, I think he is definitely the strongest of the Ballydoll contingent. If they're going to win it, it'll be with him, unless something funky happens. So, um, unless something funky happens, Cliffs of Moa is the one for Ballydoyle. James, do you agree? Um, no, I like Douglas MacArthur for um, O'Brien. I don't know if Paul's got a price for us on him. Paul, have you got a price for us? A bit of a googly there from uh, James, which you would expect. 20 to 1, Douglas MacArthur, James. Yeah, I think if you go back to his win at Leopardstown, first, um, second time up last year, he O'Brien was raving about him. Um, it's a maiden O'Brien likes to use. He's won it, got a good record in it, and I think Camelot won it. This horse has got the pedigree for an Epsom Classic. He's a brother to Was, who won the Oaks a couple of years ago, and um, is the, their dam is a half sister to New Approach, who won the Derby. Um, he cost a lot of money as a yearling, he was, so he's, he was bred to be good. And O'Brien was raving about him after after that win, massive engine, big engine, that type of thing. Um, the wheels might have come off slightly after that but he did he did in it in his post race debrief call him a big baby so maybe he was just maturing he won the um he won the darren stand and and it's sort of the jockey booking i like as well colm o'donoghue's on who is people might think he's a big part of bally doll he's not really anymore he rides a lot for jessica harrison he's on fire this season he's only had four rides for o'brien this season but he's been called up for this one he's got he's got a good record lots of experience around here he won the oaks um on um on qualify a couple of years ago, he knows what knows everything all about the course. He's one of O'Brien's trusted guys, and I, I think at the prices he can he can definitely hit the frame and maybe even even win it. Okay, so um, James is quite sweet on Douglas MacArthur. Ben is of the Ballydoll squad. What's your thoughts? Well, after James Burn has tipped that, I better phone the office immediately afterwards to make sure that we cut that. That he's a very well respected judge within the industry. Sarcasm there, postcast views and listeners. Um, but I, I think Cliffs and Moher at four to one is slightly too short, um, Lee. I think he's probably in there as favourite through reputation. Aidan and Cool the Coolmore lads all said that he need would need to run at Chester. He did it well enough, but it wasn't really impressive. And he, his form doesn't really stack up to, to, to against some of the others. Like there's a lot in there with with a similar sort of chance. I would say, 
clearly he's probably come on for the race. Ryan's chosen him with Aiden, so he's probably come on a lot. But at four to one, I think he's shortish. Maybe um, we saw a few quid for Capri um, a, a few days ago. Um, I guess it's all going to de depend whether these thunderstorms that are meant to hit here um, uh, at about one or two. If they, if they turn up, that one will like a bit of soft ground. And, and it was a nice effort from him in the Derrinstown Derby trial, which is always a good trial for this race, where he finished third. OK, so that is the Ballydoll lineup sorted. John Gosden, five runners. Imagine that, five runners for Johnny G in the derby. Again, one of his could star favourite, Cracksman, won the Epsom. Epsom trial winners don't win the derby, but maybe Cracksman will. Maybe. Will he? Stuart? I think there are two elements with Cracksman. Uh, first of all, Aidan O'Brien, he can run five in a derby and still win it. He's done it before. I think if John Gosden's running five in the race, I mean, he's keeping uh, shutter speed and uh, what's the enable apart. Like, he, he wouldn't be the type that would run five in a race if he was incredibly confident in his first choice, would be my, would be my take on it. So that raises a question mark with me. He was impressive in the Derby trial and everything went against him that day. Did you think he handled the track in the Derby trial or at Breakfast with the Stars? I think in the Derby trial he definitely, I don't think it was the track that caught him out. I think it was Permian that caught him out. He was caught a bit on the inside. Permian made his challenge and was able to hold him in. Yeah. So he had to wait for Permian to come past before he could get out. So then he actually picked up quite well to, to collar him. It was a clever ride on Permian that caught him out a bit rather than the track, I think. Um, James, I was having a, a baguette and a croissant on the morning of Bref yeah. Breakfast with Stars in, in France, yeah, yeah, with, with some nice fig jam as well. I remember watching the video, I was thinking, Cracksman didn't impress me at all uh, in his go. Eminent did, we'll go on to him later, but again, I just, I, I'm not wowed by Cracksman so far. Are you wowed? No, I'm with you, Lee. Um, I wasn't at Breakfast with the Stars, but having spoken to people who were, it, it, they don't get the feeling that there was any sort of buzz about when Gosden brought Golden Horn to the meeting who runs in the same colours a few years ago there was a, a bit of an x-factor about that horse which I don't think there is about Cracksman he's he's solid he's won round the course he's obviously beaten a, a Dante winner in Permian and if they're both improving at the same sort of level he, he perhaps can confirm that form is it strong enough form to win the derby I'm not sure it is um, and it, it, it just doesn't it doesn't do it for me and guys do we fancy any of the the Gosden runners to run a, a big race anyone shout now no one's nodding. They're all looking down at their papers. Except Ben is just looking at me quite menacingly. I, 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 I can't fancy Cracksman. I, I, I really wanted to see him in the Dante um, Lee. Unfortunately, he didn't run because of the ground. I really think the horse probably could have done with another run. Uh, a, a canter around here for breakfast with the stars um, doesn't, doesn't do it for me. I'm, I'll probably be proved wrong. But I, I, I'll come on to Permian in a minute. I think Permian will win it. But Cracksman, not for me. Binners, the floor is yours. We'll look at the four horses uh, that represent the Godolphin in inverted commas banner because although Permian runs for Sheikh Mohammed son, he's managed by the same team. You like Permian. Yeah, I do. I think he's a real bit of value, um, Lee, at 10 to 1 compared to Cracksman's 4 to 1. Two and a half times the price. I, I, do, I do think Cracksman was by far the best horse in the Epsom Derby trial. Um, Stewart's already t said why. But... Um, Two more runs for Permian, one, one a listed race at Newmarket and the Dante, which is often considered the best derby trial. Um, I think he's going to have improved a lot for those two runs. And um, I think he's got more of a profile for the mile and a half than, than Cracksman has, to be honest with you, Lee. So at the prices, I really, really think Permian is a bit of value. OK, lads, been as keen on Permian. What about you guys in terms of the, the four... Godolphin runs in inverted commas. I'm throwing the other three Godolphin ones out because if William Buick's chosen not to ride them, then I'm, I'm not having them. They're not winning. I do like Permian. I agree with Paul. I think he is value at the price. There's another element to Permian that makes him of interest, and that's the way this race is going to play out tactically. With 19 runners, what you're going to get is a lot of them like to go forward, and a lot of the ones that like to go forward aren't really horses that we expect to figure in the finish. The main horses that we expect to be figuring in the finish are going to be coming from midfield and held up. 
Now, for them to get through 19 horses with horses on this camber, around this bend, the horses that are in front that are tying up are going to be coming back through the field. To thread your way through there is going to be incredibly difficult. You're going to have to get very lucky or you're going to have to come very wide and give away a lot of ground around the bend. Permian is going to be further forward. He's a Mark Johnson horse. They just keep galloping. And I think from a tactical uh, position he could be well positioned as long as they don't go hell for leather from the start if they go too fast he'll be cooked but as long as they don't go too fast he will be tactically positioned better than any other fancied horse in this race a very very persuasive case made for permian by mr riley do you support that case uh, no i don't really like permian actually no he doesn't like it. Um, of the Godolph and other ones, I was at Newbury when Dubai Thunder won his maiden by 10 lengths. And as we've seen with the Philly Dior Aaliyah, these horses get entered in the derby years in advance or sort of when they're yearlings. And um, often you get a horse win a handicap or a maiden in the, in the spring and you can, you'll say to Connections, you know, they've got the derby entry, is that a million miles off? And I asked, and Adam Kirby, there was no one from Godolph in there, Adam Kirby rode. And, and I said to him, is, is a derby a million miles off? And he, he, he sort of said, no, it this horse has got a massive engine um that was on easy ground whether we'll get the easy ground tomorrow he's uh um he's related to far of previously good offense who loved a bit of cutting the ground um he's a half brother to him um so whether that's important to him, he could be i'm not saying he's he's going to win tomorrow but he could be one to follow it's it's only 15 days since that win debut win he could be one to take out of the race sort of as long as it, it doesn't fry his brain coming so soon but he's certainly not one to give up on whether he's one for tomorrow I'm, I'm not sure but I do like him he's a nice horse and as the Newmarket trained horse one is maiden at Newbury yeah. will you be taking that as a Lambourne victory in the derby should he go on and win no I'm glad you brought that up Lee because with my Lambourne hat on we've actually got a runner in the form of Sally Wynn trained by Sylvester Kirk um, who is a massive price and in a way he could almost be like a poor man's Permian um, he um, he was second um, or he was Sorry, yeah, he was second to um, Khalidi of John Gosden's in the field and stakes. Um, who, and that horse has obviously franked the form by winning at Goodwood yeah. last week. P um, Salomon's not run since. I, I, I sort of had a text from his jockey, Fran Berry, this morning saying he's overpriced, he likes his chances. He's not 10 to 1, he's 66 to 1, Paul Salomon. 50 to 1, James. 50 to 50 1. To one. Um, so he, he's, he's, he's street wise, he's had a lot of runs, uncomplicated, um, battle hardened experience. He, he, he could just be overpriced in an open year let's remember he, he, he's not without a hope uh, hopefully anyway for a big party in Lambourne well I know our Racing Post uh, columnist Richard Hughes tips Saluan and Khalidi in the derby so two two great minds be invited to the party James uh, hopefully yeah why not <laughs> <laughs> business has no more to add in that debate there um what else we've got to add? Um, eminent, guys. I, I, I like Eminent. If he stays the trip, it's clearly an if, but if he stays the trip... Why do you like Eminent? I think he um, looks a really good horse in the Craven. I think if he hadn't run in the Craven and you just sit him finish sixth in the Guineas alone, you'd think, wow, there's an encouraging performance. A la sort of generous, uh, that sort of run in the, in the Guineas on the way to the Derby. And I love the way he handled the track here. I reckon, I reckon if there's a star in the race over a mile and a half. It might be him, but I sense you disagree. Yeah, I don't like him. Okay. Uh, does anybody like Eminent? Not for me. Not for me, Lee. Um, again, as to say, Star, he's, he's not won a Group 1 race. Um, unlike, I think, maybe a horse like Generous or even a Sir Percy or even Australia a few years ago, I think the Guineas was his. Guinea, you know, it, it wasn't a prep for the Derby. It, the Guineas was his Gold Cup. The Guineas was his Gold Cup, yes. Yeah, so, um, the, pro the problem is Martin Mead is very enthusiastic and as journalists who speak to him he's easy to talk to it's very easy to get seduced into think into fancying his chances um, I just I just don't think he's, he's good enough um, to, to win a, the classiest race there is um. well that's that's a blow to my hopes but even so um, he is still my tip we'll go to the one two three slides now shall we for the for the derby I'll say eminent to beat Cliffs of Moa with rekindling I think it's a good each way bet I think he'll thrive over a mile and a half running on for third so for me eminent cliffs of moa rekindling who wants to go first i will i'll have permian from cliffs of moa from ben battle or however you want to say that one permian cliffs of moa ben battle i think you said it beautifully james i'll stick with douglas MacArthur to win it and um, ballydore one two with 
Cliff Samoa second and then let's throw in Salouin at a big price to, to hit the frame for third. Would there be a party for third? I'm not sure. Um, you'll have to ask Connections. <laughs> OK. Binners, you're one, two, three in the derby, sir. Well, we're going Permian, Capri and uh, James has persuaded me to put Douglas MacArthur in for third place. That is the derby and no one saying Dior Leah. Commercial break time. Check out Paddy's horse racing offer for Epsom. On two races on both days of the festival, it's money back as a free bet if your horse finishes second, third or fourth to the SP favourite. Max £25 per race, pre-race singles only, conditions and exclusions apply, 18 plus, begambleaware.org. Welcome back to part two of our Investec Derby Day postcast. Stuart Riley talking in the background when he shouldn't be because we're almost live on air. Um, the first race on Derby Day is that mile and a quarter three-year-old's handicap that's produced so many good horses, many of them trained by Sir Michael Stout, who doesn't have a runner. Um, guys, do we have any fans for this one? Paul? Um, I quite like M&M for uh, Simon Dow. Uh, it'd be great if a local trainer could win, Lee. Um, and he, the horse won here in April, stayed on well over a, an extended mile, and I think the, the mile and two could well suit him. Good stuff. Anybody else? Yeah, I fancy two in this. I like Eminem, like uh, Paul's just said. I spoke to Simon Dow minutes ago, and this has been the plan for the horse ever since he got it. So that's encouraging. The one thing he did say that was slightly... Um, sort of dampen total enthusiasm was he said the horse works here every day obviously he 100 meters across the road from the track and he said that he's been shocked and surprised at all the th all the everything popping up the structures the people around and the horse thinks he owns the downs and has been a bit confused to see he's had to share it for the last few mornings so he said he was a little bit worried about the horse temperament wise but this has been the plan. They think he's very progressive. They think he's a good horse. So they were very keen on him. I also spoke to Mark Johnson, who has Masham Star in there. Now, this horse has run 19 times, so it doesn't seem the most unexposed, but Mark Johnson has these types. They look fully exposed, and then they just keep finding. And Mark Johnson kept using one word whenever he talked about stepping him up in trip. He kept saying, interesting. I'm really interested to see how he gets on up in trip. I think the trip is interesting. I can't wait to see him over this trip. I think he'll be interesting. He's run four times since he gone back from Dubai. He's been really consistent. Now he steps up in trip. Mark Johnson thinks it's interesting. I think it's probably interesting. That is interesting. And what would also be interesting is, has Simon Dow maybe asked Epsom if they'll take down all these temporary structures for Eminem tomorrow? Uh, well, I mean, you know, Simon Dow is Mr Epsom. I think if he wanted to, he could. But he wants the horse to grow up a bit, so he's putting him through it. Uh, taking one for the team there. The Princess Elizabeth Stakes, guys. Interesting group three for the Phillies and Mares. James Byrne, your views? Yeah, well, it would be great for Lambourne if um, absolute blast one for Archie Watson. And I don't think she can be ruled out. But um, a three-year-old at the bottom, Urban Fox, who ran in the 1,000 guineas. She didn't run too badly. And that was, I think that was the first time she hasn't made the frame. Um, she's a really consistent horse. James Tate is good at placing his horses. He would, He's not the type... Obviously, I don't know what, whether the owner would want to or not. He's not the type to come for a day out. Um, she, like I say, she always hits the frame. She didn't run too badly in the guineas, and maybe she could be an each-way price to, to go, in, go in again. Anyone fans of the favourite laugh aloud? Yeah, I do, Lee. I think he, he, he was really good when he won the listed Conqueror Stakes. Uh, won it by three, three and a quarter lengths from a stout favourite. I might just add, actually, that Paddy Parra... Uh, if, you're, if your horse finishes second, third or fourth in this race or in the 5.15 at Epsom on Saturday, um, you'll, to the SP favourite, you'll get your money back as a free bet. And I forgot to mention earlier, oh. at the risk of my job, no, no, we, we are four places each way in the derby. So obviously I'm hoping that everyone has a bet with Paddy Power, but I must stress, if you're going to back each way, please make sure that you get four places in the race, Lee. Your job is secure, well, as, as so it should be. We'd hope so. Yes. We'd hope so. Um, the Invest at Diamond Stakes is the third race on the card. Again, a Group 3 over the same mile as the Princess Elizabeth Stakes. Boys, who has a stronger than the Princess Elizabeth? Stuart Riley does. Um, no, Stuart Riley doesn't. No, Stuart Riley doesn't. James Burr? Yeah, um, I think Here Comes When was impressive at York last time in a handicap. He's back into a, a group race, but the key is the ground with him. If, if I don't think we're going to get the showers that we'll forecast. If they do come... That, that could give him a chance. Andrew Bolding won the race with Tullius last year. 
Um, but it's just waiting on the weather for him, I think. I'd give one half a chance, and that's custom cut. It's a race that Connections used to, well, the trainer used to target with Penitent, who was just about my favourite horse in training. Uh, he's run in the race, I think, the last, last year or the last two years. He's run well. I could see him going well, but it's not a strong fancy. Okay. And uh, then we go on to the dash. Plenty of old times this one. Plenty of horses with dash experience. Binners, the betting. Yeah, we go 7-1 Duke of Firenze and Desert Law. We can't separate those, Lee. 8-1 Edward Lewis and El Astronaut. 10 Kimberella. 12 Caspian Prince, Boom the Groom, Majestic Hero and A Moment of Madness. And then it's 16-1 to one Bar. And your winner is? Our winner is A Moment of Madness uh, for, for Charles Hills um, at 12-1. to one. Um, beaten three quarters of a length at Goodwood last time, was a bit keen early on under a good young apprentice that James will know more about than me, Callum Shepherd. but I like the fact Sylvester D'Souza's taking, take, going on board tomorrow and I think he'll be able to give the horse a, a slightly stronger ride and get his head in front in over this fastest five furlongs in Britain. OK, will, will uh, your Lamborn muck, mucker, Charlie Hills, be successful, as Binner suggests? I hope so, but um, I'm not sure about the draw. He's in five and I've done the preview for this for the Racing Post tomorrow and the, a lot of the trainers prefer to be higher. I know Charlie Hills wanted to be higher when I spoke to him earlier in the week as well. With that in mind, and I, I couldn't put anyone off the top two that Paul's just mentioned, Desert Law and um, Duke Friends. I've spoken to David Griffiths and Paul Midgley, who are, n neither of them would put you off from what they've said. They're very keen. Um, uh, the, I like the top one as well. Kim Barella's been um, sort of transformed since joining Richard Fire this season. He's... He's two from three, um, got a young apprentice on to take take off his top weight. He could he could go where it seems to have a good draw. He's in 20 as well, so maybe he's one to keep an eye on as well. OK, Stuart, any views on the dash? Yeah, of course. I mean, I like Desert Law. I think he's a very good horse. He's won the race before. He's obviously of interest. The one I like is El Astronaut. He's won three of his last four starts. He's clearly progressive. As James has just alluded to, he isn't ideally drawn, but... I think you're perfectly capable of uh, of still running a mighty race from from where he is, and uh, and yeah, he's he's got the profile of the type of horse that I really like for this. Good, and his trainer John Quinn. I also spoke to him. He said he agreed with the draw, but he's also done a bit more of his homework and said there's a lot of pace around where they are, so perhaps it won't be too big of a problem. Good stuff. And lads, anything else at Epsom or indeed elsewhere that we want to tip up on Saturday? Stuart, you've been looking at the, was it the juveniles hurdle at Hexham? Yes, yeah, I had a look at the juvenile hurdle at Hexham. Uh, I'd probably go with the Alan King horse. He does well with his juveniles. Yeah, he seemed fairly, uh, I wouldn't say confident, but expectant. Like the horse has been, this has been the plan. He had a few runs on the flat for Alan to go hurdling. Uh, whereas the Paul and Claire Rooney horse that's in there, that was bought to be a flat horse and they're doing this because that didn't work out. So on that basis alone, I'd probably side with the Alan King horse, but I don't know what the prices are. I don't think it's priced up yet, so can't really tip without knowing what the price is. And with that first juvenile hurdle of the season in mind, Binners, what's the latest triumph hurdle betting? Um, you've thrown me a right googly there, Lee, and um, I couldn't tell you right now. I t however, I can tell you I fancy a horse called well-named horse in the 550 called Paddy Power. Um, yeah, he, he's in the 550 tomorrow. He, he, he won impressively at Newmarket last time. And um, it's about time this horse started winning. Um, a couple of years ago, um, Richard Fahey actually phoned up my my boss at Paddy Power and asked if we if they could name this horse Paddy Power. They thought he was an absolute superstar then. He hasn't been quite as good as, as they'd hoped, but hopefully... He can go on now and, and get get the company a lot of publicity and, and so that I can sit around drinking tea in all afternoon. And is your boss at Paddy Power, Paddy Power? Uh, he, he's one of them. They actually phoned a guy called Phelan McAnna Amara. I hope I've got that, that, that Irish completely right. For well, your job, I, I, I hope you I, right. I hope so, but he's a nice guy. I'm sure he'll forgive me. And um, they phoned him. Um, there was a video on his website a few a couple of years ago with with this horse working really well with some two-year-olds that had already done well as i say he hasn't he hasn't been brilliant so far but let's hope he is now good man and we are about to finish this part the weather's actually getting 
pretty warm now, starting to get quite scorched here. Um, first of all, though, uh, result of competition time. Um, last week, you remember, we asked you who won the Irish 2000 Guineas. The correct answer was Churchill. And the winner of the £25 free bet from our lovely sponsors, Paddy Power, is from Aldershot, Mr Chris Stewart. Chris Stewart, you are our winner, and this is a commercial break. Check out Paddy's horse racing offer for Epsom. On two races on both days of the festival, it's money back as a free bet if your horse finishes second, third or fourth to the SP favourite. Max £25 per race, pre-race singles only, conditions and exclusions apply, 18plusbegambleaware.org. Guys and gals, welcome back to part three of our pre-Investec Derby racing postcast with myself, Lee Mottisad, Paul Binfield, Stuart Riley and James Byrne. And we're almost finished, but before we do, we are going to look at the Pre du Jockey Club, sponsored by the, for the first time by Kipco at Chanty on Sunday. Paul Binfield, it's a smaller field than the Derby, but a real quality lineup. Go to the betting for us, would you please? Yes, we, we make 7 to 4 Bramito the favourite for uh, Jean Claude Rouget in my best French accent. Magnifique. Magnifique. Uh, Magnifique. Okay. okay. Uh, seven or two, Recoletos, who was supplemented for the race, interestingly. Six, Rivet for William Haggis. Eight, Bay of Poets. Another supplementary entry, uh, Soleil Marin, along with Valdgeist at 10 to 1. 12 to 1, War Decree for the master of Bally Doyle, Aidan O'Brien. And then it's 14 to 1, Barley. Any fancy, sir? Uh, well, listen, I hate tipping favourites, but um, I was interested to see that in your newspaper the other day that uh, Jean-Claude said that, uh, what did he say? He said, I've seen what I wanted to see. He's going for this race because it's got, uh, rather than the St James's Palace Stakes taking on Churchill there, he, he's pleased that there's only 12 runners here. And um, I think I think he... He's a bit better than when he beat a horse called Le Brevido two and a half weeks ago when he was all out. I think he's a bit better than that, and I would go for the favourite in this race. Good man. Ben has made a solid case for Bramato, Stu. Uh, well, with Christoph Sumion not riding and Xiao Marrera in Hong Kong, I'm going to go with the best two remaining jockeys in the world. Uh, Ryan Moore is on War Decree, that's 12 to 1. Uh, Maxime Guion is on Plumatic and that's at 16 to 1 and I'll take those two each way against the field. Okay, Stu so going with the jockeys there. James, what's the Lambourne view on the Prideaux Jockey Club? Yeah, unfortunately we're a bit thin this year on, on them horses, Lee. Um, but I, I agree with Paul, I like Bramato and I don't really mind tipping favourites, they're favourite for the reason, but there is an O'Brien horse in, in there, Taj Mahal. Um, Paul, did you... Did you get a price for him? Um, Taj Mahal is 66 to 1, James, the outside of the field. Yeah, he's always, I think, he might have a few question marks, which I hate saying about a son of Galileo, but he's, um, he's from the family of um, Marvellous and um, Glen Eagles, so he's really well bred. And I think he's always threatened to run a big one. And obviously, he's trained by Master. Um, he should, he'll stay the trip, no problem. He just might be one um, worth taking a chance on in a big race when things could fall right for him. Frankie de Tour had literally just walked past, and had he stayed around, I'd have, I'd have sent one of you guys out to try and grab him and, and bring him in, but he's gone. So that was just like life, wasn't it, really? Um, that then was our Investec Derby postcast with thanks to James Byrne, Stuart Riley, and Paul Binfield. Have a fantastic Derby day wherever you go. Well, that's, that's awfully kind yeah, of you. Thank you. couldn't have done it without you, Lee. Well, no, you. you, 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 you <laughs> <laughs> Stuart Riley was just rude to me. That was it then for our Racing Post Invest at Derby Postcast. Good luck with the day and we'll see you again on Monday. Bye-bye. Check out Paddy Power's new and exclusive Cash Card Plus. Available to use online, at ATMs or even down the local. Paddy Power, you beauty.